where some of them notice that I'm trying to um, sniff or block my nose, they're going to be like, ah, you two, you're going to be a mother one day. You two, you're going to have your own child one day. Oh, you two, you will see how it is. Eh, it's the diaper that is smelling. It's the day that is smelling. And, um, I don't even need to say that you need to clean your bathroom, clean your toilet regularly. I don't care. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but unclog um, your drains regularly. That is unclog <laughs> um, your drains regularly. That is very important to be very honest. Bola. how are you doing i believe you're good what have you been up to i believe you're good <laughs> i'm good too thank you for asking you can drop your response in the comment section if this is your first time here welcome and thank you very much for clicking on this very video i am grateful and please while we're at it can you please subscribe to the channel right away i mean you're going to love it here so please and please subscribe to the channel right away i promise you you're going to love it here so please just subscribe right now right now right now don't postpone it that is how you tell me that you love what i'm doing and you want to see more of it please subscribe Thank you. And to my older subscribers, I love you guys so much. Thank you very much for all the time. Thank you very much for always believing in me, for always cheering me up. <laughs> so straight into today's video, it is how to make your home smell very lovely, very nice. Like basically just getting rid of the bad smells in your home and then giving it this awesome smell. I am a lover of good smell. I love my environment smelling very nice like i cannot trade good smells i can't trade it for anything me smelling good my home smelling good like i prioritize it a lot and, you know when i was single i really don't like visiting people i used to avoid it like as much as i could i would just look for an excuse and give them but of course if you want to visit me you're welcome but for me to come to your house I, that is because i am very sensitive to smell I am super sensitive to smell and that's because of my upbringing. My dad was very, very strict about keeping the home tidy. My dad had a very sensitive nose when he was alive. So I think I picked that up from him. But if I'm visiting someone, it's either the person just moved into their home and I know they are still settling in. So and the, the odor will be minimized, <laughs> will be little. Or I know that this person is a very type of person i've been in their space before and i appreciate the smell in their home but really it's it i don't i don't hate anyone for it it's just it's just me and another thing that made me wary of visiting people then especially new moms new mothers if i visit new mothers you know you're going to be perceiving different types of smell left right center and they're going to be like and when some of them notice that i'm trying to um sniff or block my nose they're going to be like ah you two you're going to be a mother one day you two you're going to have your own child one day oh you two you will see how it is eh it's the diaper that is smelling it's the day that is smelling and um just because i'm a very next person and if you've been in my space at some point or you you've been um opportune to come into my home before you're going to know that i can clean two four seven even if i'm tired i'll still get up to clean i just want everything prim and proper so when i had my home baby and my home still don't smell i was like no those people were dirty <laughs> i'm not judging anyone too but i was just like those people were dirty because i was just expecting okay maybe it's having children having kids that brings this that brings the whole thing to your home. No, if you're a tidy person, if you're a neat person, you're a neat, if you're a dirty person, you're a dirty. So let us start with this. How to remove unnecessary odors from your home? Because before you can ever say that your home is, it should smell nice, you need to remove your wanted, the bad odors from your home. And I look at some people, I've visited a few people before, that there's a lot of bad smell in their house. And every corner you look, there, there are air fresheners. They hang air freshener here that fools us there. And in my head, I'm like, this thing cannot work. You need to get the bad smell outside your home first before you try to use 
air fresheners, diffusers. If you come into my home, you really see air fresheners. There's even no air freshener on the wall. Diffusers, I really use diffusers these days because my toddler is going to hold the thing down. And my home don't smell. So let us first deal with the bad smell. And the first thing I wrote here is remove unnecessary items from your home. And this is very important. It is very key, especially to mothers. You know, I've visited some people before and items that their babies used seven, ten years ago is still in their house. I mean, come on. Well, what are you keeping it for? Items their babies used 15 years ago, you're still going to find it in some people's homes. You're going to find old books, old shoes, even shoes they themselves are not wearing anymore, clothes they're not wearing. You'll be putting unnecessary items in. When you put unnecessary items in your home, you over the time, they're going to build up on unwanted odors or bad odors into your home. And that way, the item is wasting you. The items are wasting you. You are not using them. You should give it to the people that actually need them. No, you should throw them out. No, and people who come to your home, they'll be perceiving holders from 1970, from 1980, from year 2000. It is wrong. It is wrong. If you have items you've not used in the last one year in your home, please get up. No, don't get up yet. Watch this video completely. But after this video, go into your wherever you kept them is in your living room your kitchen your bedroom items you're not using items you've not used in the last one year let us start from there for me anything i've not used in the last three four months i i give them out or i throw them out that is me but i know people can be so attached to material things for me i'm not so attached to things and i'm i'm grateful to god for that grace but let's start from items you've not used in the last one year gather them together the ones that are still in good condition look around are there people you can give these things to and if there's no one to give them to give them to charity give them to, to charity people are going to need them and okay if you don't want to give them you die, i don't even want to i don't want you to throw items that will be useful to other people i don't want to throw them out you either have a relative that needs that thing, but if you don't even want to give it to people close to you, give them to charity. They're going to appreciate it. And also, you'll be giving your home a new facelift. Some of your clothes you've not worn. You are hoping you're going to go back to size 6. And you and I know you're never going to go back. You're never going back to that size 6. So why are you still keeping that size 6 clothes? That size 6 gown, the size 6. It, um trousers why is he keeping it in the wardrobe take everything out give them to people that need them your size 15 and uh, 14 or size 16 and you're keeping size 8 dresses in your wardrobe why give them out you know some people have old tvs old laptops that are not working give them out old books your children are not in the universities they're not in secondary schools or colleges whatever you call it in the country that you are and you're still keeping the books they used in nursery in your home and you expect your home to smell like a billionaire home it does not work that way every unwanted item in your home throw them out some of you keep spoiled electronics spoiled fans spoiled aces what are you keeping them for baby pram that you're not using you're stocking everything in throw everything out throw the ones you need to throw away and the ones you can throw away, give them to give them out to people. The next point I wrote here is waste disposal system. I have a very effective waste disposal system. Um, when I was in my home country, which was Nigeria, I disposed my my bin every two days. But since I moved in Europe, the waste disposal system you keep recyclables on a, a inside a bin and general waste inside another bin so that even makes it easier for me but i personally aside um recyclables bin and general waste bin i have a caddy that is on my kitchen island it's close to my sink and that kitchen caddy i put um probably if i'm washing fish i'm washing meat or i want to do the dishes leftover food meals anything that is like um a fresh food item or spoiled food item it goes into the caddy and when it's time to dispose i just remove the nylon in the caddy and 
take it out because I've discovered that when I put my when I put leftover food um, when you clean fish clean stuff here you know all the leftover or food when you put all of that directly into your general waste bin it smells faster and you have to just take it out every day so what I do now is the items that make the, uh, my general waste bin that make it smell very easily I just separate them I separate it into the caddy and when it's I at times that's the only thing I'm disposing every day so every day I throw out the bin um, the waste in my caddy because that is what can cause odor in my home if you're not doing that already you might want to employ that because I cannot say that okay but you have to be disposing your um, your waste bin every day it's not realistic especially if the waste bin um, do not get full if they don't get full easily so you just be wasting your refuse disposal bag so what can make your beans smell the items that can make your beans smell faster separate them so my food so my food items fruits or anything that smells that I know this thing is going to cause and hold up by this time tomorrow they go into my caddy if i can i'm going to attach a picture of the caddy so you know what it looks like and even if you can get a caddy you can just get a five liter um bin and put a nylon inside put it on your kitchen highland that is going to make a lot of sense and a lot of difference and another thing i want to mention which is very very important especially for mothers is your baby's nappies have no business in your general waste your baby's your baby's nappies have no business in your general waste. Your baby's nappies should be inside another bin entirely, and that bin have no business being in your kitchen or your sitting room. It belongs to the toilet because it is actually poo and we. So it belongs to another bin entirely on its own. You dispose it separately, and it should be kept in your toilet or your bathroom, which. The one I use is from Tommy TP and I've had it since before I even had my baby. I bought it and I'm still using it to date. If I can attach a picture of it, I'm going to. But even if you cannot afford that type, because this one has a um a click and twist um system, but even if you cannot afford that, get a separate bin, probably a 10 or 15 liter, yeah, or 20 liter, um 20 liters bin and put it in your toilet your baby's nappies your baby's whatever that's coming from their waste their waste product it goes into that alone and it should be in your toilet don't mix it with your general waste when you mix it with your general waste it is going to smell very quickly it is going to smell very fast so even if you are going to be taking out your your bin every day it's still going to be smelling it's just like you as an adult you pull, you put it in, in somewhere and you keep it inside your general waste. It's going to smell. Your babies are humans too because uh, they are humans too because their babies does not mean that, oh, their poo will not smell. It smells at times even more than the way adult poo smells. So get a separate, a separate bin for your baby's nappies and it should be in your toilet. And aside that, I have... Um, a bin freshener that I use solely for my baby's um, nappy bin. I have a bin freshener that I use. Probably I'll do a video about that someday if I remember. So you can get a bin freshener. So because at times it takes two days, I'm being honest right now, it takes two days or three days before I dispose my baby's nappy bin. So if I want to keep it smelling fresh and I don't want the odor to contaminate the toilet, I put the um, the bean freshener, it's a very strong um, freshener. I put it inside the inside the bin anytime I put a new nappy there and it helps. And also I have air freshener in the toilet. In summary, have an effective waste disposal system. Don't mix all your waste together. You put bottles, empty bottles here, you put leftover rice inside, you put your baby nappies, and your home is going to smell like a disaster. So please learn how to separate your your dirt. At, at, at least you need about five or six beans in your home. For me now, I have one in the bedroom, two in the kitchen, one in the toilet. So and the next point here is ventilation. Simple, open your windows regularly. 
this is not brainer but many people don't open their windows so you keep breathing in the same hair that is in your home for the past one month the past two months the past three months and it is not healthy at all aside the fact that your home is going to smell terribly when you don't open your windows you are you are posing some health risks to yourself especially if you have children you know and this is very common to people who stay in the cold region either the very cold region or the or the moderately cold region you know when we first moved here i also used to shut the windows half ah, cold or cold or we cannot open the windows and then we had a neighbor there we had a neighbor she and her husband they are tanzania and then the woman called me one day she said please be opening your windows I was like, it's cold. She said she knows. In fact, then it was during winter. She said, even if it's for five minutes, open your windows. She said, especially because of your baby, she needs fresh air. She said she noticed that I don't take her for work. So it means she's indoors 247 most of the time. And yet, my windows are short. The only time I open my doors are when I have delivery to, to pick up. And since I started practicing it, I've 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 seen and improve in my own overall health and then the the atmosphere of my home if you cannot open your windows every day open it at least three times a week for me personally i don't open my windows every day especially during summer it is hard for me to open my windows every day during summer because there are annoying flying things all around that the moment you open your windows they're going to come in and in the night they'll start biting your legs they are not mosquitoes but in fact they are more annoying than mosquitoes what i would say is this if you stay in the very cold region what i do during winter i open my windows five minutes and it for, i don't open it for more than five minutes during winter but what i do is if we are in the living room i open with the windows of the rooms and then i shut it back then we we'll come inside the inside the rooms and then i open that of the living room so that is what i do during winter and you know sometimes we are like ha ah, if we open the windows and um, we're going to freeze one thing you understand if you stay in the cold region one thing you understand already is that either you open the windows or you don't open the windows you're still going to freeze it's still going to be cold so open the windows let fresh hair come in you need the fresh hair to take the damp smell the annoying smell out of your home when you open your windows please open your wardrobe as well where you keep your clothes let fresh air get to where your clothes are it is very important especially for people who wear one clothes who repeat clothes it is okay if you want to repeat your clothes before you wash them but if you do that please open your wardrobe when you open your doors it takes this bad smell out of your wardrobe you know if you like buy air freshener worth 200 pounds put it in your wardrobe if it is not well ventilated it is not going to smell good it is not going to smell good so please when you open your windows open open your wardrobe as well because especially in europe you know most of the time we don't get the opportunity to sun dry our clothes especially if we stay in apartments that does not have um, a balcony you we don't get the opportunity to sun dry our clothes so it means we are drying our clothes indoor so if you are drying your clothes indoor no matter how dry they are they are still going to have some kind of smell they're still going to have it they're still going to have it so open your windows open your wardrobe i do that regularly every time i i open my windows i open my wardrobes i open my baby wardrobe as well just to let the good smell the good air in for those who stay in the warmer region for instance when i was staying in nigeria um i used to avoid opening my windows too because of dust but i think it is a choice you have to make it's okay dust should come into your home and your you're going to have fresh hair then you shut the windows you do everything like this thing 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 and you are recycling the same hair every time recycling the same hair the hair you breathe into the fact some of you have visitors visitors will come in this the air they left in your home is what you're still going to keep on recycling for the next three weeks it's fine if I have visitors, the moment they leave, I'm opening my windows. I'm not, I'm not thinking that they have some disease or anything, but it is just what it is. The moment they leave, except you leave in the night. But the next morning, I'm opening my windows. I just want fresh air to come in. It is very important. 
and another another reason why you should open your windows if you stay in the cold region is because during winter spring eaters are always on the eating system is always on and the air you, if you if you, if you pay attention when the eating system is on the air can be annoyingly dry I don't know if I'm the only one. The air can be annoyingly dry when the eating system is on, and I don't even like it at all. So I just prefer to open my windows in the morning, even when it is cold. If I prefer opening my windows during winter, during spring, because then there they are less um, flying things all around. If I open my windows, nothing is going to come in. My home is still going to be very normal. But during summer, I find it very hard to open my windows. So, especially during winter, during spring, I'm encouraging you, please open your windows. This is even because of your own health right now. Um, before I continue, if you're yet to subscribe to the channel, please subscribe right away. I'm going to give you five seconds to do that. <laughs> Thank you. Another point here is laundry. How do you take care of your laundry? How often do you wash? Um, your dirty clothes do you keep them for a month keeping laundry for a whole month can cause your home to smell except you keep them in a very airy space probably you open the windows of the place you keep those um, dirty clothes if you do that it might reduce the odor but if you don't do that you should at least no matter how busy you are you should do your laundry at least once a week and if you're a nursing mother who you have toddlers at all you should do your laundry at least two times a week that is it is one of the ways that you can get rid of bad smells especially for parents who have um babies that are still breastfeeding i remember when my toddler was still um at, i think two between two to six months and then she used to bring up food a lot which was said that was quite normal so every we change our clothes that time we can, we can change clothes up to three times because she just brings up food even my own clothes are not we're not safe our father's clothes were not safe at that time the chair and all of that so in that period of time we had to i had to wash often i had to do laundry more often in fact every day because if you keep clothes from a baby that bobs that brings up food very often if you keep such clothes in your house if your house is going to smell terribly that is the situation of one of the moms that are of some of the moms that have visited in the past and their homes were smelling terribly it is most likely because they are not doing their laundry regularly so you need to do your laundry regularly if you are a mom if you're a nursing mother especially you need to and aside even your baby bringing up food if you are still breastfeeding and you do have excess milk and I think it happens to every mom that you will sleep the time you wake up your bed is full your pillow is full of breast milk you need to do your laundry very often yes I know that fingers are not equal and um, some people don't have washers in their home and some people don't have um, helping hands like people that can that can help them wash their clothes but I'll say no matter how tight it is it is at least do your laundry once a week if you're in nursing mother you need to do your laundry once at least once a week but even i don't think doing um, laundry once a week for nursing mothers even if you if you're washing by hand this is me imagining the worst case scenario even if you're washing by hand it is better and more time saving than you wash at least every day or every two two days that way you don't have much to wash so under 15 20 minutes or 30 minutes you're done washing each day but then it is still your choice to make but i'm just making suggestions because if you want to pile everything up till the weekend you might have to be spending three hours why you can just take 15 minutes to wash every day or 30 minutes to work to wash every day it is less stressful for you your own smells better and also you're saving time for yourself so another point here is you need to have an effective cleaning system. I don't want to say, oh, you have to clean your house every day. You have to clean it every two days because I'm not the one living your life. You're the one living your life. So you know what takes your time. You know how free you have. You know how busy you have. But my point is just set a routine of how your home will be cleaned. If you're very busy, you can be doing just mild cleaning, you know, just dusting surfaces and picking up litters and probably 
at the end of every week but by weekend she called in professional cleaners to come and clean your home for you even in europe here i know people who do that a lot and i also do it once in a while when i'm very busy and i don't have time or i just don't have energy i invite professional cleaners you pay them for one hour or two hours and they clean your home everything is fine and you'll be chilling so i even know people i don't do that regularly i clean my link and myself most of the time but i know people who do it regularly they have kids and they i don't want to say the number of kids they have and they are just busy and the wife is off to overwhelmed so she just she does the mind cleaning she does the mind cleaning most of the time by herself but every weekend cleaner it is regular cleaner comes into their home to clean for one hour it is one hour every week so if you can afford it and i think things like that are just basically essential if you it means something you have to cut something out of your lifestyle to be able to afford such that is if you cannot clean by yourself so, so my point is if you cannot clean by yourself if you know that you're too busy to be cleaning regularly by yourself get someone to come and clean it for you you are not going to be spending much especially if it is making money that is keeping you busy so instead of you um having so much money and your home still looks like a disaster so before you send to so this is to the people in europe before you send urgent to came back home make sure that you put basic things in place for yourself also under the cleaning i have here if you clean by yourself for me i use hot water and the bleach when i'm when I want to mop my home and I'm glad that the apartment we stay now it is a wooden floor where we're staying before was um it was um carpet I mean rug and that one was not easy for me to clean at all. The apartment we stay currently is that of wooden floor which makes it easy very easy for me to clean. I use hot water and bleach and also floor cleaner when I want to clean and it is very very effective to get bacteria accumulated dirt off the floor. So if you have wooden floors, if you have um tiled floors in your home, you might really really want to employ hot water bleach and i don't use the target i just use um floor cleaner to clean and at times when i just finish cooking especially you know i'm i'm african i'm nigerian so some of our soups some of our foods have very strong smell and my kitchen my home is overwhelmed i make sure that i mop after cleaning the surfaces doing the dishes you know the smell is still going to linger so i make sure i use hot water and bleach to mop the floors because you know floors floors um take they retain smells the floors of a home of your home they retain smell so if you notice that your home is smelling is having a friendly smell after you do the general cleaning mop that is very important to mop with hot water and bleach it takes off some of these um unfriendly odors that you can perceive in, in the home if you have curtains in your home, I mean um, fabric curtains, you need to wash them periodically. I advise washing your curtains every six, six months. And if you can afford it, you know this is conditional statement. If you can afford it, have two sets of curtain that when you take this off, this um at the end of six months you put the other one and then you wash this you store them up but if all you have is just a set of cotton it is still okay but wash your cottons at least every six, six months it's very very important you know that cottons um they absorb, they absorb smells they absorb odors too if you don't know you can just go and test it go and take your cotton and smell it you're going to know that it has this kind of odor so it is very important that you wash your curtains regularly if you cannot wash them by yourself give them to dry cleaners if you can afford it for me when i was in Nigeria, i had just one set of curtains and i used to do, wash them every six, six months but what i used to do then was that if i take off the curtains in the living room and other surrounding rooms today give it to the track now it's when they bring them back that i'm going to remove the curtains for the other parts of the house 
so I don't just take down all the curtains at the same time but if you can if you have another set of curtain you can just take everything down and if you don't even have another set of curtain currently but you know that you can afford it if you have the money that's the reason why we work to use money to buy comfort for ourselves so if you know that you have the money to get another set of curtain and it is not going to affect other things just get it so another point here is clean your shoes regularly if you ever lived with me <laughs> you'll be laughing right now because i clean my shoes especially when before i moved to europe i used to clean my shoes if i wear this shoe out i'm keeping it i'm not going to mix it with my other shoes still i clean it so you can find i have a spot i keep them you can find six of you can find six of my shoes seven of my shoes in one spot i'm separating them it is when i clean them i'm going to take them to where i keep my other shoes i don't mix clean <laughs> i don't mix clean shoes and you know or clean shoes together it is just an habit for me but i'm not asking you to do that of course but my point is if you know that you went to an area that is dirty or you know there's just dirt under your shoes please clean your shoes and if you wear trainers you wear sneakers you need to hair dry them you need to wash them but even if you're not washing them probably because they are black or brown and that is not going to show on them easily you need to hair dry them shoes can smell shoes can smell and also get um shoe freshener they sell them in in, in stores you can just get um they have they come in different forms that you can just put where you clean uh, where you keep your shoes and also clean out where you keep your shoes clean the place out regularly probably once every three months just take out your shoes clean the place clean the shoes that you know this shoe has a stain on it and to prevent it from becoming overwhelming for you clean them if if you get home today and you know that, okay this shoe i wore just separate it if you know that you went to a place that is very dirty or somewhere that is not so clean or instead of something don't mix it with your other shoes clean it first before you put it there that is the reason why i used to separate my shoes then so that it will not become overwhelming for me if i go out to the address and i know i just keep it and when i have time i'm going to clean it and Put it with my other shoes because shoes can smell and the smell of shoes at times can be unbelievable especially for people who sweat a lot i don't sweat a lot i sweat but not so much but for people who sweat a lot people who sweat a lot you need to clean your shoes regularly you need to air dry or some dry your shoes regularly so another way of keeping unfriendly odors out of your home these days unclog your dreams the drains in your in your bathroom, in your kitchen, unclog them regularly. Um, okay, I'm going to try and get a picture and attach it if I remember. Um, there's this thing I used to unclog my own bathroom um, drain regularly. It is not until your drains are clogged, or it is not until they are blocked and water is not flowing anymore that you see that oh i need to unblock this and you'll be spending a lot of money to to call in the plumber to do it for you when you can do it regularly for me once in a while probably once in two months or once in a month at times it depends on how how i have time i just take efforts to unclog i use this tool to bring out stock dates and then i pour in drain um what is it called the drain flush or something I have it at home. I buy three at a time. I buy six at a time. Sometimes, so I just clean it, rinse it, rinse my drain with hot water. Then I pour all this chemical that frees that clears drain. Because I've noticed that when you have clogged drains, it brings out unfriendly smell into your into your home. That smell is going to be flowing gradually. As a from for a starter, it's going to be only in your toilets, in your bathroom, in your kitchen. But slowly, it is going to spread into other parts of your home. So to prevent that, unclog your drains regularly and pour in this drain flusher. It is a chem it is a chemical for um so for unclogging um drains, and there are different brands that. Are that make this chemical so clean your i don't even need to say that you need to clean your bathroom clean your toilet regularly like, okay. <laughs> but unclog <laughs> but unclog your drains regularly that is <laughs> unclog, <laughs> unclog your drains regularly that is very important to be very honest that is one of the 
things that you you don't suspect but they can bring in unfriendly odor unfriendly smell into your home let's talk about high times that you can use to make your home smell better to lift the smell in your home number one i wrote is coffee grind and when i am talking about coffee grind i mean caffeinated coffee not the decaf so you are not going to take it the, co uh, the coffee in your cupboard the one you're drinking every day which is the calf the smell won't be as strong as caffeinated so another one here is candles i don't know to explain what candle can do for you in your home but just make sure that you're selecting candles with very strong and lasting smell another one here is diffusers here if you get the really good ones diffusers are very very lovely and another one here is fabric freshener i use fabric freshener a lot you know the importance the essence of fabric freshener is for you to spray on your curtains i don't like it when food smell lingers in my home i don't know it's it's not it me at times that i feel like throwing up i don't like it when food smell lingers in my home as much as i cook immediately i'm done cooking and i've cleaned up i've dished the food put it into the freezer into the fridge i what i start thinking of i can i eliminate this odor especially on that same day because by the time I wake up the next day and I step out of the room and I'm greeted by this food smell, I feel like throwing up. I don't know, but it's just me. I, I don't like the that food smell lingers in my home. So I use fabric freshener. I spray it into the hair. I ventilate my home when I'm done cooking. I ventilate my home properly and then I put this fabric freshener. I spray it at strategic places. Sometimes I even spray it on corners. Of the walls and sometimes I put I spray some on the floor and I mop the floor with it and it is very helpful this is the one I use it looks like this fabric freshener from Astonish and it is very lovely because the smell is just awesome for me option for you to lift the smell of your home is simmer pot i don't know if you know what simmer pot is simmer pot is i actually have a video of me making simmer pot but i received the grace to edit it <laughs> i'm yet to edit it but i have a video of that simmer pot is used to it is just let's just say it is homemade air freshener it is very lovely and the smell lasts longer in your home i'm going to uh, upload the video very soon of what a simmer pot is and how you can make it it is very very effective and i do it often to lift the smell in my home or when i'm done cooking probably one of those days when i do up cooking and i just don't like the smell in my home and i have fruits and herbs at home so i just quickly get that and the last but not the least here is air fresheners we all know air fresheners the spray air freshener and also the ones the block air fresheners the ones that you can put in strategic places for me I don't have block air fresheners in my home because I just don't see a reason why I should but I have spray air freshener and another reason why I don't have block air freshener is because of my toddler she climbs everywhere pulls everything so to it's just a safety it is another safety measure for me it is better I don't have it at home because if she pulls that she start eating it it is going to be a disaster so I'd rather not just put certain items in my home just a preventative measure so thank you very much for staying with me to the end of the video. I am very grateful. Thank you so much. And if you are yet to subscribe to the channel, please and please subscribe right away. Please subscribe right away. That is what how you can tell me that you love what I'm doing. Thank you very much for staying with me. I am grateful. I'm going to see you in my next video. Till then.